church say amen. Amen, amen. amen again. Amen. One more time. Amen. If you would, if you turn with me in your Bibles to the Gospel of Luke, chapter 17. There's just one verse I'm going to lift up in your hearing. And when you have it, if you would, if you'd rest on your feet. Luke chapter 17, verse 17. If you have it, say amen. amen. And Jesus answering said, were there not ten cleansed, but where are the nine? You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Were there not ten cleansed, but where are the nine? And as a topic, let me use today, are you the one or the nine? Are you the one or the nine? Are you the one that... God cleansed, are you a part of the nine who failed to return and give God glory? Some of us spend our entire lives wondering just that. Us as you may rest, thank you for your service. You keep wondering, am I, am I the one good enough? Am I the one good enough to be the first graduate from college in my family? Am I the one good enough to be the first person to own their own home? Or am I just somebody in the herd? Am I just a part of the nine? Am I still just someone who's wondering and seeking my own way? Some of you are wondering, will we be the ones that break through and hold a public office, so will we just be a part of the herd? Some of you even sit there today and you wonder, are you the one that will get the right job or even have a job or be able to support their family? And I'm here to tell you right now, you can be the one. Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, you can be the one. Turn to your other neighbor and say, neighbor, don't be one of the nine. Amen, amen. And so as we look at this text, we, 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 at first, when I first looked at it, I said, my Lord, and let me walk you through it in such a way that hopefully it gives you a great explanation is that exactly what has happened here. And we find the story opens with uh, uh, Jesus coming through to Jerusalem, headed toward Jerusalem and passing through an area between Samaria and Galilee and wouldn't you know it, across the way, I'm not talking about close like me and Evangelist Jordan, but across, across the way, like in the back of the church, there are about ten folk all up in there together, and they just happen to be lepers. Let me stop right there. That could be your high school graduating class back there, which you are part of. It might not be 10, maybe it's 100, or maybe it's 200, but you're a part of that herd, and you're trying to figure out, am I going to be the one, or am I going to be the nine, the ones that don't give God glory, the one that don't do what God wants me to do, but, or will I be the one that breaks away? You can answer that for yourself. And so they all cry out with a loud voice, says master, which tells me that they recognize who God is. You know, some of us, sometimes we, we won't even recognize. We'll say, um, and keep it moving because we don't want to give the appropriate amount of recognition for God and what he does. And they all ask, he says, have mercy on us. So it was one of these things where everybody wanted some mercy. It wasn't one of these things that, Lord, have mercy on me. It wasn't an individual or personal statement. It was a joint communal statement where they were trying to get everybody healed in the bunch. And don't you know when you hang out with folk long enough? Huh? You're going to become a part of them and they're going to become a part of you. And so when you start asking for stuff, you start asking for stuff for all of us us huh 
So as he asks for it, and, and he, he tells him, he says, go show yourselves to the priest. And while they were yet on the way, oh, see, so he, y'all, that was your opportunity to shout right there. In other words, they asked for it, and even before they even knew it, they had already received it. And he says, while they were yet on the way, they were healed. And I want you to know right now, some of you are yet on your way. You've been healed, but you won't acknowledge the fact that God has already touched you. He's blessed you. And instead of recognizing the fact you are the one, you want to be, a, be one of the nine. Oh, yeah. Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, I ain't one of the nine. Because see, what happens is there are a few things that are happening as a result of this. And, and one comes back. Throws himself at the feet of Jesus and Jesus looks at him and I can just imagine what's going through his, his, his mind and, and as the, the one is glorifying God with a loud voice. It's right there in the text. I'm not making it up. Verse 15 and, and down there glorifying God it says that the scripture takes special note that he is a Samaritan. I'll get back to that in just a little bit. But you find that Jesus he asked the question. He says, hmm. Were there not ten cleansed? I'm, I'm, I'm just checking. I'm just checking the record. I want to make sure the record is straight. And see how you were one of the ten. I'm going to ask you, were there not ten? But where are the nine? In other words, you here. You thought enough of me to come back and give me honor and give me praise. You thought enough of what I did for you. And I did the same thing for you I did for the other nine. You thought enough of it to come back and give me praise, honor, and glory. What about the other nine? Some of us, as we go through life, God, God blesses a whole bunch of us. And we look, look around and say, well, I'm supposed to get that. Huh? And we fail to give the appropriate honor to the appropriate person. And we have to understand that God will not take it back once he gives it to you. He's not an Indian giver. But there are certain things that you have to understand as God continues. And then notice I say it continues to bless you. You say, well, I'm not quite sure. Let me ask you this. Did any of you take a breath this morning? Amen. Did any of you peep out this morning? Hey, I'm still here. You got blessed this morning. And if you made it to church this morning, you ought to just have a double portion because he saw fit to give you a church going mine. Are you the one or are you the nine? So as we look at the text here, we, 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 we find that, that we have to do some things that God wants us to do if we're going to be the one. Now, you know, it's easy to be a part of the herd. Anybody can be a part of the herd. All you got to do is show up. Because once you're in the herd, there's, there's a position or a pecking order that you have in the herd. You can't be no better. It can't be no worse. But if you're going to be the one, if you're going to be who God wants you to be, you have to be able to operate separate from the group. Oh, look, I'm not making up right there in the text. It says that he healed 10. They all went to get healed. And then here comes one who breaks away from the places that he had been their entire life, breaks away from the associations that he had had, breaks away from being in that situation of illness, that situation of disease, and now he is prepared to come and do God's will. I oh, see some of y'all missed that right, right there. You were born into a situation where you chose your friends. Amen. Say amen, lights. Amen. You know, God gave you your family. You can't divorce your family. Although I think sometimes I wish we could, but you, you can't. They are yours. But those friends that you chose, you, can't, you, you can turn them loose anytime, but you refuse to. Some of us want to remain with the herd. 
Some of us want to remain with the nine because there are a couple of things. There's familiarity in the nine. They've been through light situations where we've been lepers together for I don't know how long. The scripture's silent about how long they've been lepers. But they had been together for a period of time and they had obviously come to operate as one group, as one body. Look at the text. It says that they cried out, have mercy on us. Because I got an association and affiliation with these other nine in this group. And I'm not ready to make that change. But once the healing came, once the change came, here comes one up out of the group. And he comes back by himself. Some of you have to understand if you're going to be the one that God called you to be, you've got to separate from those familiar places that you've been hiding out there. Separate from those familiar folk. Those folk that don't mean you no good. Those folk that will talk about you like you got a tail as soon as you disappear from the group. Those folk that as long as you're in the group doing what they want you to do, you're good. But the minute you walk away, who do they think they are? Hmm? Who do they think they are? They think they're better than us. But see, you got to understand, they receive the same thing that the one received. But they refused to give God the glory. And they continued on their way. So what happens is, when you separate from the group, you're now telling God, God, I'm here to do your will and your way. Yeah. See, some, some, sometimes, it, it, yeah, it's, it's hard. It's hard for you to take up another position contrary to the one you've had your entire life. That's why, you know, some of us have been in the same herd our entire life. Amen. You know, I kind of smile sometimes when I hear people say, well, you know what, uh, me, so-and-so, we, we, we've been running buddies for the last 20 years. I just kind of look. So, okay. And I use my next question. You, you, you ain't made no more friends since then? I'm just saying. So as you prepare to change your ways, and as you prepare to be what God has called you to be, you have to have a change in your associations, which is going to be tough. That's going to be one of the toughest things because guess what? That's the same person that you used to drink those 40s with. Oh, I'm sorry. Y'all y'all, y'all didn't do none of that up here, do you? Okay. Well, you're the same person that, 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 that you sit and you pull it on those blunts with. Oh, I'm sorry. Y'all don't do that either. I'm sorry. Huh? Amen. We got, we got somebody want to be honest here. Those folk that know when you did that, what you did, that stuff you got hid in the back of your closet that don't nobody know but them nine, you got to separate from them, understanding that as soon as you separate, they're going to tell it, but it don't matter at that point in time because the God you serve will forgive you in advance for what you've already done. Are you the one or... Are you the nine? Because if you remain the nine, you don't worry about those kind of things. Because you keeping their secrets, they keeping yours. It's kind of like a Mexican standoff. Huh? So you go, go ahead and make that change. You make that change. You also got to understand, if, if you're going to be the one, you have to realize that the shape you're in is not the shape you want to be in. Huh? Think about it. I've been a leper. I, to appreciate that, to be a leper is like having full-blown COVID when it first started. Don't nobody want to be around you. Whoop. Back, get away, put him in isolation. Except being a leper, you had to walk around and stay away from others. Otherwise, you could be killed. You had to, you end up just the only folk you hang out with is what? Lep other lepers. And you had to stay at least 10 feet away from them. And you had to cry out unclean, unclean. So everybody knew that you had an issue. So once you understand that. And now God has touched you. And while you are yet on. 
Oh, let me let me go and read it, read it to you. Let me read it to you. And he says, Go show yourselves unto the priest. And it came to pass that as they went, they were cleansed. Huh? As they in other words, he says, go to the back, and as you start to make the trek. This stuff start falling off of me. And I, I realize I'm no longer dirty. I'm now being cleansed. And my situation has changed because of whose presence I've been in. I've been in the presence of the almighty God. I called on him in a loud voice. Have mercy on us. And he had mercy. And his mercy cleansed me. But also the fact that I had faith in him. Oh yeah. The fact I had faith that he could do what he's Some of us got to understand that there is nothing too hard for your God. And when you have faith that he can do what he says he can do, it's simple. He said, "Look, he, you notice, you notice he didn't throw no holy water on him." Oh, somebody better come on talk to me. He didn't he didn't he didn't turn around three times and, and cry out. He says, look, go show yourself to the priest. Because see, the priest knew he was a leper. The priest knew they were dirty. But he said, just go show yourself to the priest. And some of you say, well, Pastor, I don't, I don't quite get that. Well, let's go right back here to the word. I don't want you to think I made any of this up. And it says in verse 19, and he said unto him, arise, go thy way. Here's the punchline. Thy faith had made thee whole. Oh, the fact that you believed on me, the fact that you gave me glory, the fact that you called on my name is good enough for me. And that's what only reason I want you to go see the priest is because I want you to show somebody, somebody of a reputable content, that you have been in the presence of Almighty God. Huh? So why don't you believe in him? Your faith has your faith has to be conditional that whatever God says he can do, he can do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I oh come on now. Here she go. Oh, there she go. You know, I got this thing, got face ID. I gotta get my face in the right place and it'll come back home. Ain't technology wonderful? <laughs> But see, you got to also understand that Hebrews 11 says, 11 and 6 says it like this. But without faith, it is impossible to please him, for he that come to God must believe that he is, and that he is needed to actually wrap our arms around him, that he will give us whatever it is that we need. It's impossible to please God without faith. That's the one you want to, and he is a rewarder. This is the part I really like. He is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Now think about this now. I'm a leper. And I got basically no hope. It's but Jesus. Huh? And then I'm walking along one day, me and my me and my other nine. And I just happened to peek out. That's him, y'all. <laughs> Look at him. He's a Jesus. Have mercy on us. The faith is what healed him. Because, you know, Jesus, he didn't say anything. He said, just go on and show yourself. Go on and show yourself to the priest. Huh? Think about that. Church, you can do the same thing. You, you, but you got to have faith that God's going to move on your behalf. And you've got to understand that it may take some time. You, you, you notice they weren't healed immediately. Oh, let me go back, back into the word. It says, as they went, they were cleansed. So with, with, with every step that they took, they get a little cleaner and a little cleaner. Until all of a sudden, the, the one says, why am I going away? I can just imagine, they don't say it right there in the chat, but I can just imagine in my spiritual mind, the one said, why am I leaving 
the only true and living God, the one that just spoke to me, and I'm clean. The one that I cried out to from a distance says, go show yourself to the priest. And every step I've taken, I can feel this mess getting off me. So I need to run back, fall down at his feet, and give him some glory. We need to get to the point in our lives that, 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 that we're, wherever we're at, we need to be prepared to give God glory. You may be standing in the line at McDonald's and you realize that you didn't have the money to pay for McDonald's until you looked in your pocketbook. Or oh, somebody will say amen when you get a chance. You go up in there with just enough money to get, get a Coke. And you look down in there deep and for whatever reason you got enough in there to get a Big Mac Happy Meal. Huh? And oh, you ought to say amen when you get a chance. Huh? When your car been running all week on two dollar worth of gas that you put in last week, you ought to be, oh Lord, I'm mean, look at what you've done for me. So we gotta figure out are you gonna be the one or are you gonna be the nine? Now notice the the nine kept going. Now, I got no doubt they got to the priest. Priest says, you're now cleansed. You can go on out among, go see your family and go see your friends. Let me, let me go ahead and break the news to you. As God blesses, and even the nine, the Bible's un, 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 unclear about it, even the nine, when they were cleansed, I'm sure some of them had families. Loved ones. And when they come back to him, I can just imagine them looking like. And after a moment, I can imagine their heart doing backflips and them running into their arms and saying, Lord, have mercy. And I, I'll guarantee somebody cried out, Lord, have mercy. Oh, the same thing the ten hollered. The families are going to start hollering when you start returning to them. Let me go ahead and flip the script. The one. The one. Because everybody knows you, you, you've been a leper. But they see the change in you. They see that God has cleansed you. God has moved you from where you were to where you are now. And I can imagine them too crying, Lord have mercy. See, you got to understand it's the mercy of God coupled with the faith of man that will work a miracle out in your life, but you have to be the catalyst for it when you open your mouth and you cry out, Lord, have mercy. Now, if you don't, want, if you don't know what mercy is, let me give you a quick definition. Mercy is when you get what you don't deserve. Huh? Oh, y'all, ain't nobody had that but me in here? Some of y'all sitting here with jobs you ain't got no business with, but God showed you favor, showed you mercy. Some of you got families that you don't even deserve based on what you've done, but God has shown you mercy. Some of you have been ill and God has restored you because God showed you mercy. But you won't even give him any glory. You won't let him know that you appreciate what he's done, even in spite of you, because all you want to do is tell everybody how good you are, how, how great you've been. But the mercy of God, combined with the faith that you have in God, is enough to do exceedingly, abundantly, more than you could hope or think. I'm about through now. I'm, about, I'm just about through. Get my face in the right place again. Yeah, there she go. All right, here we go. It's last thing, and I'm headed in my seat. If you're going to be the one, you can't let your past dictate your future. See, yeah, yeah, I know we've all done some, you know, we've all got some stuff in the closet. Thank God that he allows us to keep our closet. Uh -huh. And he allows us to unpack it in due time. But you got to understand that the fact that you weren't the smartest, you weren't the wealthiest, you weren't the brightest, you weren't the best looking, you weren't, you weren't any of that. That won't keep you from being what God called you to be. 
The only thing that will keep you from being what God called you to be is your lack of faith. And if you go look in that mirror, that person looking back at you, that person. Look at you. Hey, why, why don't we have, ask, ask yourself, why don't we have more faith? Huh? Why won't we believe that God can, that he will answer our prayer? Why can't we be the first one to get promoted? Why can't we live in such and such a house? Why can't we have this kind of family? Why can't we go on vacation? Why can't we? See, we, we, we've got to get to the point where we are on the mission that God sent us on in current day. Not doing those things that you did when you were doing whatever it was that you were doing, okay? We need to go ahead and cut those things loose. We have to understand that God wants us to go and tell others what he has done for you. Now, don't, don't, don't get caught telling my story. Because my story kind of kind of crazy because I sometimes struggle believing it myself. I'm going to look. You did it. I said, look at him. You know, I tell, I'm serious. I tell L people and they go like, really? I go, yeah. Sometimes I got to tell them two or three times and they start to, they say, hmm. Well, you think he'll do that for me? I said, well, he, he probably won't do that for you. But he'll answer your prayers. And he'll move you the way he wants you to move. And he'll cause you to be what he wants you to be. But see, you've got to understand that the reason, the only reason Christ came was because somebody cried out. Huh? If, if, if you remember how, if you remember how the story goes, it says that, it says that he heard Israel. Huh? And he sent Moses. Then he hears about 400 years later between the last chapter of the Old Testament and the first chapter of the New Testament, he heard Israel again. There have been 400 years of silence because, you know, y'all are hard-headed. You, 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 you won't do right all the time, you know. But he heard your cries and he sent his son. And he sends the Christ not to actually curse you, or to punish you, but to bring you life and give you life more abundantly. So as the Christ came, even though we were still in our sins, even though we were lepers on this earth, we were in groups of, we were big lepers in, Israelite lepers. We were, we got a form of godliness, but we lacked the power thereof. And so we cried out, crucify him. We say crucify him instead of crying out, Lord, have mercy on us. We say crucify him. And he goes to the cross where he never says a mumbling word. And he hangs there between the sixth and the ninth hour. And, and he hangs his head and dies. And he goes down into a barred tomb. And, and after three days, he gets up out of that tomb. But now let me tell you, let me hear you. He gets up. As the one. Oh yeah. He gets up as the one. And we still remain the nine. And he rises up with all power in his hands. And he walks around among us. Where he shows himself for 40 days. Ascends into heaven. Seated at the right hand of the father. Where he now intercedes for you. And for me. He is the first fruit. Of those that were dead. He is the one. The one that we're trying to get to. And we ought to cry out every now and then. Lord have mercy on us. And our faith should be sufficient. To save us. From ourselves. We're, 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 we're sinners and we're undone. We've already been found to be guilty. But his mercy is sufficient. Church, I want you to know right now that whether you're the one or whether you're the nine, you're still in his hand. And while in his hand, he proclaims in his word, no man can pluck you out. 
So I would ask you right now that you just call on and say, Lord, show me your will and your way. Have mercy upon me, for I am a sinner undone. So now as he sits at the right hand of Father interceding for you and for me, he's looking for another one. One at a time, amen? amen? And I believe by faith that each and every one of you can be one of the ones. Because he's going to come back looking for a church without a spot or wrinkle where he shall rapture them and we shall forever be with him. I'm going to ask right now as we stand on our feet, as we extend the invitation to discipleship, maybe there's some man, woman, boy, or girl on the sound of my voice after hearing this message. Prepare to lead the nine and come and be the one. Be the one that God has called them to be. As we stand, I'd ask that you begin to pray now that God's will be done in your life. That he'd have mercy on you for those things that you've done. Any unforgiveness that you have in your heart, to ask him to remove it right now. So that as he receives you into the family, that you might be found without a spot or a wrinkle. Doors of the church are open. Open for discipleship. Open for prayer. Won't you come?